All right, so we're back doing a little bit of uh, the do-it-yourself upholstery. Uh, this is uh, just represents a few of the drawings that I did just to try to figure out which direction I wanted to go. This is the hardest part of the whole deal. I mean, I've th this is just some of the ones that made the cut. Uh, and uh, as you can see, some of these resemble what I ended up doing, what you'll end up seeing me do. And some of them, you know, got a clear no on them. Uh, this one right here is really close to what I did on the door panels, uh, but not quite. And there you can kind of see one where uh, I kind of mocked up the seat just to kind of see where it was going to land on the interior door panel. But uh, the more you do this, the better you are at uh, it looking the way you want it to look. And from here, what I end up doing, and, and this is some I've done before, uh, zoom out a little bit here where you can kind of see. These are, uh, this is a 32 seat back. That's the back of the seat. And then this right here would be the seat bottom. So if it was a, a cutout view of the seat, it would be something similar to this right, right there. Kind of an L shape. This would be kicked back just a little bit, as you can see by the back of the seat. Uh, these are all depend on, you know, the driver and how uh, how you want it to sit, how you want it to lean back. You can kind of see the side profile of what the seat, and I really change this angle on every seat, just, you know, depends on how the bottom of the seat fits, how I feel when I get in it. And what I do is uh, I'll take uh, what looks good to me and what looks good as far as the design, and I'll cut it out of some chipboard and then I'll turn around and take this foam. I buy the foam in large sheets, and then I'll take the bandsaw and I'll rip this, rip this down in the bandsaw to my pattern. And then when I get enough of these cut out, they'll be laminated together, just like this right here, until they come all all the way across, you can see how I ended up cutting one down and uh, put it in there as I designed the seat. And then what you see there is uh, a black marker that I've gone and uh, did my design on. You can see the V on the bottom was a little too much. The, the red line on the top was just not enough. So I compromised and uh, I found one that I liked at one point, I had these corners uh, rounded, and now I went back with a squared look. And uh, kind of show you a uh, sample over here of uh, what the bottom, what I sewed up here. This would be, uh, see if I can find it over here where, you know. That'll wrap around the bottom. This is the boat stir on the side. And then there's my strips going up and down. And that's kind of uh, just a sample that I did to see if I like the squared off edge or the rounded edge right here. And uh, I kind of like the more squared off edge. The rounded edge uh, is a little too modern. And uh, I wanted the squared off edge, which is a little vintage and European. And the 32 that I'm building myself is kind of a, got a European touch to it. So let me get back at it. I'm going to uh, get these uh, uh, clear. When I, when I make my patterns, I'll, I'll use this clear vinyl. Uh, sometimes people call it tablecloth. I buy it in a 10-yard in a ten, ten row. And it's about... $3 a yard, but to mess this up at $3 a yard is uh, a lot cheaper than uh, to mess up the vinyl or leather that you're using, which could be a whole lot more. So what I'll end up doing is I'll lay, this is a piece of scrap here, but I'll lay this up against here where I want it. I'm just going to do it real quick right here just so you can see. 
and put some pins in it. First, I'll see if I can get a straight edge. If I can get a straight edge on the vinyl, I know you can't see it, but I'm looking for a straight edge right here. So let's just put a pin here. Get that edge going down straight. Put a pin there. That keeps me from having to draw this edge out. And then, let's take a marker. And then uh, I do my little witness marks like this. And then you know where you want to cut it. And this is my pattern. And we went with this top line up here. And we'll draw that line all the way down. And we've already got this line right here because that's where the, uh, the plastic went over to. The vinyl went over to this line right here. So we've got that. We'll make all those little witness marks. And we've got this line drawn on the edge, which is a seam. That'll be a French seam. So when we cut that out, what we'll do, we'll add our sew allowance to that, which means uh, we'll come out here. If you want a quarter inch allowance or with our, in my case, there's going to be a French seam right here. So what I'll do, I'll do a half inch sew allowance. So I'll put me a dotted line all the way around where it's half inch and then when I cut that out it'll be a half inch off of this seam <clears throat> when I sew that together I'll sew this line here first hooking the two pieces together and then I'll come back and I'll fold out my sew allowance be half an inch on both pieces so uh, then I'll come back with a little uh, a piece of vinyl the same material and I'll lay it facing up on the back side and I'll show you that later when I do my uh my French seam right here on both sides uh the half inch will be folded out and I'll have another piece of vinyl back there like I said and that'll make a really really strong seam right there so you'll see it you'll see it and uh anyway I'll give you some more details here and there and uh once again if you're a professional don't laugh at me I've, uh, I've done quite a few uh, interiors, but I am self-taught. I have not been to a school, and I've got a wall of screwed up parts uh, that I've learned from. And I, I keep them tucked away to where, uh, you know, I can look back at it and say, man, I really messed that up. But anyway, don't give up and save yourself a lot of money. I have spent $25,000, $27,000 on upholstery jobs. Uh, and those are uh, 2011 prices. 2011 prices. I spent $27,000 on a upholstery job. Uh, spent $25,000 two years before that. So uh, with, uh, with that kind of uh, expense, I decided... Uh, it was time for me to learn how to do it myself. I could screw up a whole lot of money before I spend another $25,000. But not, not to knock the job. The car was worth it. And uh, anyway, that's enough of me rambling on. More to this video soon. All right, after you get your patterns made, and I think I've got a video showing you the patterns on the seat or some pictures. Uh, just do a rough cutting of the pattern. Lay your lay your stuff out on your fabric or your leather or your vinyl. And go ahead and uh, do your rough cut around the perimeter, leaving you plenty of room uh, for your sew allowance. Uh, this is just a rough pattern. Once you get this done, we're going to uh, glue up the uh, patterns Rough patterns on some rough sew foam, right, pink sew foam in the corner over there. I'll show you what's going on in a little while. And then after that, we'll lay our pattern down, do a nice uh, copy onto the back of the sew foam with all of our witness marks, all of the little dashes and all the patterns. And then we'll, uh, we'll cut that out. And then that's what we'll use when we sew up the panels. More details coming soon. All right, now that I have got all of my panels 
patterns made, I took my material and I glued it to the back of some quarter inch sew foam. It's got t-shirt material on the back of it to hold the stitching. And I used the Landau top spray adhesive and I sprayed it through a Harbor Freight paint gun. Uh, as long as it's fairly new glue, it sprays up pretty good and you can uh, lay it on and wait for it to uh, get to its consistency and tack up and then you laminate the two pieces together. All right, and then uh, I take my patterns that I made with the clear material and, uh, that, and I rough cut those out. I laid the pattern on the back side on the sew foam where I'll be doing all the sewing on that side. And I'll put my witness marks down. This B panel goes up against the next B panel, which would be this one here. The A panel goes up against the A panel. So when you start sewing these together, you line up the witness marks like that right there. Of course, the panels will be, you know, uh, face to face. And then when you start sewing, you'll sew down uh, your line, leaving you a half inch of sew allowance. That way you can fold that over and uh, put you a backing on that and do a French seam. Or if you're sew allowance is in the way, laying flat, and you you don't really have anything to do with it after you've done your blind stitch, you can trim that away. But uh, uh, a lot of seats will have a listing on it that you'll hog ring um, the, the uh, sew allowance here, the half inch, you'll hog ring that to uh, a rod or a piece of plastic that you'll sew in here and that'll get hog ringed in. It all depends on what kind of seat you're doing, but this seat here, I made from scratch, and uh, it'll have a metal rod down inside this groove right here that'll be attached to the back side of the seat, and that's what I'll, it'll get hog ringed to. So, uh, there's where we're at. Uh, everything's cut out, and everything is ready to sew up, except for my pleated panel. And uh, it's over here. I've still got to lay the pleats out and sew them up. And uh, there's my pattern for that. And it's extra long because once you start sewing the pleats, it'll gather the material up. There'll be a uh, half inch or quarter inch seam in between each of the uh, pleats. So anyway, I'll give you some... Uh, show you some of that as I do it. And uh, when I piece this video together, I hope to try to keep everything in order. And uh, hey, give me a thumbs up and let me know what you think. We're fixing to start giving some stuff away. I'm really, really close to 200 subscribers. And that really means a lot uh, for you guys to like the channel and just to see what I'm doing, I guess, every day. But uh, anyway, I'll keep at it. Keep you updated. All right, this is the uh, <clears throat> the pleated panel for the back of the seat. And uh, what I did here is the pleats are going to be two-inch pleats. And these pleats right here where I've got drawn out measure two and a half inch. So what I'll do is I'll sew a seam down each one of these lines. And then after I... Uh, sew it, I can fold it. And when I fold the line, then I'll sew a quarter inch hidden seam, which will uh, make a pleat and you won't be able to see any stitching. So it'll be kind of a, uh, a vintage look like this right here. And what I did each one of these is two inches across here, but there's a quarter inch sew allowance on each side. And I, I ran a stitch down that you can see right here. And then the reason this doesn't look like a quarter inch is that I cut the top off with the scissors after it was sewed. That way it wouldn't be puckered in the back of the seat. You know, you wouldn't feel it on your back. So that's what this panel will look like right here. Be two inch pleats. Let's see what happens. All right, so here's uh, how I'm doing the pleats. 
as you see by this first seam over here, I won't be using it. That, that's where I sewed the two and a half inch seam. Well, when I fold it together and pinch it with a quarter inch sew allowance on both sides, it takes, takes up that half inch. So you end up having two inch pleats and it looks like the, the vintage tuck and roll pleat instead of having the sewed line going down through it. Now, some people like that line right there. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just the style, you know, that they choose. You know, you put contrasting stitches in it or something. But wanted to keep it kind of the uh, vintage style. So uh, these will measure two inches across after you line it out like these haven't been sewed yet you can see where i've got my marks made to where i try to follow so that it'll be straight and that it will have that quarter inch sew allowance so let me finish up this and then we'll cut the pattern out after uh, after you get all the pleats sewed All right, I got it all uh, together. Everything is marked. Everything is double checked and triple checked. And I just don't feel like uh, sewing it tonight. Just a little nervous, don't wanna mess up. But uh, there it is. I'll show you uh, what I did on the back side of uh, all the panels. You know, I'd made the witness marks and where to line up line the stuff up like those little hash marks right there. Well, I didn't, I, I did not uh, notch that part out because it's gonna go on this and I didn't really wanna mess it up. But each of these notches will line up with that other uh, panel when you're sewing it. And uh, that just helps you uh, stay where you need to be. And uh, how I did that is uh, the little ear notchers that you would get at uh, your tractor supply or your farm supply place where your, your livestock feeds and stuff like that would be. And it's a little ear notcher. And uh, you just uh, basically, it just like a hole punch, but it'll punch uh, those little notches, those little V notches that you can line up with the other panel. So when you're sewing these together, when it's upside down like that, you can uh, line those notches up as you're going through the sewing machine. It just helps you out a little bit. If you, you know, factory panels are done that way. Uh, of course, they're not done with an ear notcher, but I think I paid uh, seven or eight dollars for that at uh, Tractor Supply, and I'm sure they're on Amazon and eBay and all the other home shopping air network things. But anyway, try that out. And I will uh, get back with you, and uh, we'll start sewing this thing up tomorrow night. All right, here we go. We've got a little bit of this sewed. We got these two side pieces sewed. Got the center section butted up. Got the other side piece. Now we've got to sew this to this, and then uh, the next is French seams on the edges. And then we'll sew the large panel to the two sides. And we'll see what it looks like. 